Where, where did the road go? Off-road edition. Welcome to this short edition of Where Did the Road Go? An off-road edition, if you will. Um, so uh, we wanted to do this because obviously there's a lot going on with dis- UFO disclosure and stuff like that. And someone who clearly does not listen to this show very much had questioned why we're not doing a show on disclosure. When how many have we done now at this point since Two the Stars came out? Like something like eight. <laughs> Yeah. How many I'm, times has disclosure happened? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right, right. That's really going to happen this time, guys. <laughs> for sure. For sure. I, and, I'm, I've been waiting on the disclosure from uh, 1989 when I was watching Unsolved <laughs> Mysteries. <laughs> the, um, and someone else had commented, like, uh, I don't know which show they were referring to. They just left a comment on the website saying, why are you guys bothering to talk about pe- people's experience with strange lights with all this disclosure stuff happening? Well, the honest answer is the strange light experiences are far more exper- interesting than the disclosure stuff, to be honest. Um, yeah. I'm just going to refer back to the meme I posted in Slack with the FBI agent typing, wow, the government's announcing that flying saucers are real and no one seems to care. Yeah, but they didn't, you know, because <laughs> the, the Department of Defense, their their official statement was that they do not have extraterrestrial craft. They do not have programs that backwards, you know, they, they never have backwards, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Back, reverse engineered any alien craft. Um, they just flat out said, none of the, we don't have any of this stuff. There are no programs doing this. There are no extraterrestrial craft, period. Well, yeah. you know, my, my brain is vibrating at an incredibly uh, high level over the past couple of days thinking about this. And, you know, some people have thought, okay, their refusal to use the word ET uh, may have something to do with the fact that they're going to like say, oh, it's, it's like Chinese craft or, you know, it's like some kind of foreign adversary or maybe even like a breakaway civilization kind of deal. But mm-hmm. I honestly think, and I'm, I'm like confident enough that I would bet money on this, that where this all is going is like, uh, I've heard it time and time again over the past, like well, this last iteration, that disclosure isn't going to be what people think it you know, think it's going to think it is. It's going to blow their minds or whatever. I think that the end game here is that they're going to come out and be like, "Folks, uh, they're all demons." <laughs> Yeah, I mean that wouldn't shock me. <laughs> I think that that's what's going to happen because if you look somebody's at somebody's going to, yeah, Ratchet if, if probably if will. The pedigree, <laughs> the guys that this filtering through, they're all spooks. They're all ex aviary spooks in particular. Yeah, and ex Collins Elite, right? I mean, if you can even consider the aviary and Collins Elite as a as a defunct organization anymore, like you know, these guys are all involved in the stuff that Nick Redfern writes about in Final Events. And a lot of these guys have uh, believe in their heart of hearts that they're engaged in like spiritual warfare, right? And that what they're dealing with in the UFO phenomena is is literally like an incursion by demonic forces. And I think that that's where this is going to go. And and that's not even conspiracy fully for anybody. I mean, there's a freaking like Netflix uh, uh, show on the whatever what Nick Redfern calls the Collins elite, the family. I think it was called. Like this is like really straight out in the open. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Matt, 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 what, doors, yeah. Matt or fa- Doctor Future <laughs> get like Doctor <laughs> Future yeah. gets paranormal. He, yeah, he, he, like you know this the Christian the Christian fundamentalism in politics. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's um, like this apocalyptic fundamentalism. Yeah, it's, it's all it's all this like eschatological cult that that believes that we're in the end times and that we're dealing with powers and principalities. And I mean, I'm not sure what the end game is there. I'm not sure like why that's what it moves towards. But I'm almost betting now that that this is what it's going to. Um, <laughs> and you know, like what's funny too is that like real heads know that saying they're all like demons or whatever isn't actually that far off from what I believe is the truth. Um, right, it, it's a reductive and um, kind of unnuanced take on spirits, basically. Right. But that I, I think it's far more close to what what I consider the truth, and that these are extraterrestrial crafts from like a, another world or whatever. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a there was a video that AOC had put up that uh, and and I'm sure people right now as soon as I said her name were cringing. There were some people out there, but you should actually watch the video. It doesn't matter if you like her politics or not. She makes some re- very interesting points. Uh, she doesn't dismiss like UAP stuff or anything like that, but she just points out how much money actually goes to uh, big uh, defense contractors. Like how much sure. money? How much of our tax money? First of all, just goes to defense. And then how much of it goes to these private companies with no oversight and no auditing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you don't like AOC, just go like, you know, and you're, you're more crypto fascist, 
go look at a Catherine Austin Fitz. I mean, I think a lot of the stuff, except for her, uh, her, her, um, this, except for her financial stuff is kind of bunk, but her financial stuff is on point. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely like she brings up good points about slush money and yeah. sort of dark financing. Basically, um, it's weird to hear that uh, from from someone on her side of the fence. It's not something you hear that often, so that's that's refreshing to me at least. Um, but she's also totally right. I mean, I, I think a lot of people they focus a lot of attention on the OSAP and ATIP. Uh, but if you look at the amount of money that was like earmarked for them, that's it's like peanuts compared to money that goes to defense contracts. It's so yeah. small. Yeah. Oh come yeah. on, yeah, yeah. Totally like a couple million. Like that's not. Yeah, I mean, you can make an argument there that really what you're talking about is who's the first guy who, uh, what was it, the guy who passed away, uh, um, who started earmarking this money. I'm completely blanking on his uh, name. Democratic. Right. Yeah. And it was essentially like him, you know, uh, 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 giving some money to his buddy Bigelow. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> here's a soft investment in Bigelow Aerospace. Well, and I was also reading, I don't, I don't remember where it was that, uh, you know, basically, uh, what should we call it was saying? Saying that Bigelow had an alien craft and all this stuff, and Bigelow's going, no, I don't. Yeah. Well, didn't didn't they claim that Bigelow had uh, meta materials? Yes. Whatever they did. Be. Yeah. Uh, well, and that was the book that what had a uh, Tyler in it that we think is um, oh the, the the Harvard guy Gary. Oh, he uh, is. Oh, Gary Nolan. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Gary Nolan. No, Tyler's Gary not Gary Nolan. Nolan. The other guy's Gary Nolan. Tyler uh, is. Uh, what's I forget his name, but he's he's like a, a venture capitalist, Silicon Valley dude. They've yeah, I'm pretty sure both of these identities are out there now. Yeah, or but out, Gary yeah. Nolan, you're talking about, right? Yeah. Well, the, the the reason I bring that up is just to point out like uh, the the amount of groundwork that's been done to insinuate that Bigelow does have mm -hmm. technology. <laughs> But isn't you know. it the same, the same, so if I'm, and I don't want to go too far off because we can come back uh, uh, to the actual UAP hearings, but somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that the same meta material or whatever you want to call them that are floating around all come from, or a lot of it comes from a, the similar area near the Black Hills where this like they think is called the offering site and that this is from a similar area. Some of this, this is the same as Arts Parts. This is the same as like Linda Moulton Howe's stuff that Whitley Strieber talks about. Like, isn't this all the same kind of like weird melted aluminum stuff? Yeah, like, I think so. It's yeah. been like handed around to people. Uh, it's, it's, it's not like they're not continue or they are discovering some new stuff, but some of these meta materials, at least the Bigelow stuff, I feel like it's the same like objects or series of objects that have been divided up that have been kind of floating around these groups of people for a while. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, honestly too, I wonder about, um, the focus on like financing and stuff. And especially the focus on ATIP, um, back to my point about there it being very little money in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. It makes me wonder if this disclosure thing isn't uh, kind of like a limited hangout for that type of thing. Because it's like, okay, well, we reveal that we spent like what amounts to pocket change on these cuckoos. And then they just nail them to the wall and basically be like, and, and then that way everyone else is like, okay, we fixed all the corruption in, in government and right. uh, all the, you know, this dark finance stuff. We've solved it, people. We've, we've yeah. punished the wrongdoers. Everyone can move on now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting also in that AOC video that she starts off with, you know, a lot of people don't trust the government and I forget exactly how she worded it, but basically like you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah. you know and it comes back to the thing we've said a million times like people are like oh the government's covering all this stuff up but if the government even hints that maybe it's going to disclose anything people are like oh well listen now now we'll believe you yeah well, yeah there's yeah. this weird like you know i was looking uh at the statements i was reading the statements that everybody made for all of these yeah um and I got to say, like, there's this serious for everybody except for George Knapp, uh, like even Corbell. And of course, Corbell's is this way because he's a complete like, you know, uh, 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 poser and he's trying to sound like <laughs> these other guys. It's all completely like super hawkish pro military pro patriot like so many like buzzword you know yeah. uh uh yeah. like um uh like dog whistles in there for essentially like you know uh rah rah hawkish 
usually right wing um, uh, uh, Republican sort of politics. You look at Corbell's, it reads completely as that. And it's all has to do with like military might and defense spending, protecting our troops. Right. um, Right. You know, things like that. Uh, And I think that's significant that like that's essentially who you have here doing this. It's not like a bunch of scientists. Yes. Mm-hmm. The absence Absolutely. of any real, like, credible threat to national security, you know, like, we need a way to, we, we need to keep these, um, you know, Lockheed Martin contracts going, you know? Well, yes. Yeah. It, it, it does give me a chuckle uh, because it reminds me of the old uh, Ronald Reagan thing that uh, the Watchmen aped to where, you know, we'll mm-hmm. just, uh, uh, or, or, or even like what, that was Project, Project Bluebeam too, right? Uh, will uh, imitate a uh, uh, existential yeah. alien threat to the planet in some way or other. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, well, let's see how useful this is. It doesn't have to be a full on, we're going to stage an invasion, but we'll put this into the zeitgeist yeah. so we can manipulate enough people to get what we need out of it. Uh, because it doesn't matter if the threat is real, as long as we create uh, enough people to feel concerned about it. Yeah. Um, well, and, and the, the Corbell stuff, by the way, just cracks me up because like, I don't know if you guys like look at him on like Instagram or anything like that, but you know, I, I like to go laugh at it periodically cause it, it just makes me feel better about myself. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like verging on stolen valor with him. Sometimes oh. like, that guy <laughs> is, and y'all, he's, he's in like, you know, some of the, the Senate and congressional offices, like taking selfies with the, you know, with Knapp and some of the other guys and acting like some big meeting has happened there or whatever, but well, it, it, you can call your representative and they'll go give you a tour. Right. Uh, right. If, yeah. You know, they'll, they'll show you around the office. Like th- this is, yeah. you know, there, there are high school kids and junior high kids going on tours that have better and more important looking photos than, <laughs> you know, uh, Corbell and his quantum jujitsu, uh, you know, uh, agenda with the UAP stuff are going on there. Well, uh, I, I, I think also we have to look at it this way. Uh, most of these, I mean, how many of these Congress and Senate senators really have no clue? They're not necessarily <laughs> smart people to begin with. Just because you're an elected official does not mean you're mean you're smart. Um, no. And very many times these people are exceptionally not smart. I mean, some of them are certainly. Right. But the people who are running things behind the scenes, these are the yeah. smart people. And so if, in the end, you need support from Congress. You need support from the Senate to mm-hmm. get money. Mm-hmm. So if you can convince these senators there's a threat, then yeah. you get a bigger defense budget. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in, and yeah. to Saxon's point, too, I don't think you should discount the psych warfare aspect of this. And, and as far as like uh, cultural driving and like meme warfare and that like um, we know that's been going on since um, like the entire history of the sort of flying saucer yeah interest. um yep. like uh, boltzmann booty on twitter had posted a good uh screenshot of some like um official documents um from oh yeah this, i yeah. have that whole document it's it's complete it's great it's yeah, yeah. i can send and it to you guys if I, want to, yeah. I would love to read it yeah and, and yeah. in that document you know like basically it suggested that during the coup in guatemala when it was like uh revealed that the u.s like had some involvement in it, and it was like it's embarrassing kind of news story that that we could distract the media by feeding some UFO like flying saucer right, stuff right. into the, yep. to the media, therefore like totally. distracting people from things that were actually going on. And that's yeah. been for, you know, uh, I don't know, decades and decades. So why would this be any different? So, uh, yeah. go, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Matt Festa had sent me a comment and, uh, usually when he does that, they're spot on. He says, uh, since di- disclosure happened again, uh, I had a thought that maybe is worth discussing. It's easy for us to have been into UFO, for us that have been into UFO studies for ages to look at all this and dismiss it as the same old nonsense that gets continually trotted out, uh, while people who are new to it all think it's a massive revelation. But mm-hmm. the thing is, even to people new to UFO phenomena, this isn't new. If you've only been following things for just five years or so, you have already seen the same script repeated multiple times, and yet each time it's still met with intense interest as if it were a shocking revelation. It's actually the broader populace, people not interested in the UFO phenomena at all, that are having the more reasonable reaction of acknowledging it with a shrug and just kind of moving on. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he's right. I mean, since the since pretty much, especially since To the Stars, we've heard the same things over and over again. And as far as I can tell, we still don't have an ounce of evidence. Yeah. Well, you know, I, people are going to send hate messages because of this. But, you know, I, I was speculating that 
that crush is uh, Richard Dotty 2.0 yeah, or, yeah. or 5.0, <laughs> whichever version of this we want to, <laughs> you know, because uh, 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 here's one of the interesting things. And then uh, Joshua Cutchin po- uh, pointed this out that, you know, he'd already been denied a skiff with the, uh, the congr- you know, the members of the committee. Yeah. Because he doesn't actually have those clearances anymore to be a part of a skiff because he's no longer in that position. Now, what's a skiff? So that's that. Um, I'll, I'll look up the acronym for it, but it's basically the the secure uh, area where he can talk about top secret yeah. or classified okay. materials <clears throat> with a member of the committee. Uh, right, yeah. But anyway, it's he like doesn't a, actually like have the privilege of requesting those now because he is no longer you know in the role where he would have had that access. Um, my point being with that is he probably, I would say there's a 99.9999% chance he knew he couldn't do that anymore when he went and testified mm. before the committee. Um, but he felt comfortable following up all of his answers with, well, I can talk to you about that in a skiff, you know, right, right. as a way to, oh, this sounds like something important behind the scenes that I can talk about. But none of the public knows that he was, you know, intentionally misleading with that. Uh, and of course, the fact that he doesn't have that access, from what I understand, is Nobody's talking about that. Yeah. Um, Josh had said something else when I, uh, oh, I don't know where it is. He messaged us about, uh, because I, I had posted the thing where the guy was saying, why aren't we talking about disclosure? And Josh said, had like a little uh, fake conversation where he said, uh, you know, you guys need to talk about disclosure. And then we talk about disclosure. And then they're like, we don't like your opinions on disclosure. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess some people might be new here, but uh, I, I feel like the last, you know, what decade of where do the road go shows should clue people into like <laughs> our, our kind of broader thoughts about this topic. Well, like I said, especially since to the stars came out, I mean, I, I remember going on um, Adam's show, uh, who's conspiracy normal with Chris Wolford. And uh, one of the to the stars stuff came out and I was like, this is not, going to amount to anything. And Chris was like, just wait, wait six months, wait six months. You're going to see <laughs> the proof is going to be out there. And I'm like, okay, if the proof is out there, I will eat my words. Like I have, yeah. you know, like, but I think in six months, it's going to be like, just wait six months and the proof will be out there. And that's exactly what has been happening. Like we just keep mm-hmm. seeing like, oh, this is coming. This is going to be a huge day. Everything's going to change on this day, but nothing changes. You know, there's there's been no concrete evidence presented. And there was an, also an interesting thing I found, and I don't think I, did I save it? So they were looking at the Tic Tac video and uh, it was, uh, I want to say it was military that was looking at it. And, you know, because everyone's like, oh, this thing is going so fast and blah, blah, blah. And they actually. It was the, it was the go fast video. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they, they actually timed it out at 40 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> like they did, they did actual trigonometry, you know, like basic math mathematics based yeah. on actual like footage. And they were like, yeah, it's, it's about 40 miles per hour. It's wind speed basically. Yeah. I was about to say, that's like, that's a normal like wind gust. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. It's that's just nothing. the balloon over water. So, yeah. so so this this video that has been touted as like oh we don't have anything that moves this fast is only moving 40 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but you know the history channel will run a show where they'll have, you know, freaking Louis Elizondo and all of his little buddies like watching these videos with like dramatic music and be like oh man that thing's moving so fast. We there's nothing on this planet that can move like that. Right. And most people that's what they'll see and that's what they'll take away from it and that's the whole point, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean I I <sighs> If something comes of this, awesome. I like the fact yeah. that, you know, regular people are now more comfortable talking about UFOs because of all of this. Like the ridicule yeah. factor has lifted a little bit. You know, something I did notice, and as somebody uh, mentioned this or, or forwarded it to me, is that there was a recent, like within the past couple of days since this, because of the UAP hearings, there was a non snarky BuzzFeed article that was like, share your, mo- you know, share your weirdest UFO experiences. And I'm sure it was just somebody, you know, finding all of these or, you know, uh, uh, cause it's clickbait, yeah. but it wasn't done with snark and it was essentially the kind of stories that you're going to find on a show like this, you know, um, yeah. uh, which I did, I had not, I have not seen something like that before. I will say, yeah, I just, that, that's actually very reassuring. Cause I, 
you know, BuzzFeed and some of these other websites that, you know, do very like clickbait of the moment stories uh, are always pretty terrible. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah, that's comforting, actually. Well, what makes me think is that, you know, and that's why I was sort of mentioning what the, the like, you know, political bias slant, I think, of a lot of the, the hearings, the people who were there, the statements is not because I think I'm making a judgment uh, either way, but because I think that it's targeting a particular audience um, mm-hmm. in the sense of like trying to get like future soldiers riled up about yeah. this. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, but if what's happening instead is that experiencers are feeling more comfortable that's coming great. forward, that's a huge positive. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've said that about like reality TV shows, you know, all the ghost shows and the Bigfoot shows, it, like even if they're trash, people are getting, it, it's, it's normalizing it. So yeah. people are more comfortable having that conversation because well, it's on TV all the time now, you know, even yeah. if they're not deeply into it, 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 it feels better. I don't. And again, I, you know, if, if something comes out of this quote disclosure that is solid and actually, you know, tells us something about the phenomena, I will eat my words, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think that show us the biologics, right? Show us the biologics. Exactly. Show us something, show it, you know, there hasn't actually been any evidence presented. It's just, it's just people saying things. What was it? What was that? Show us the Reddit fan fiction. Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. 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 Yes, that was there was a post in a Reddit and it was one one of the alien groups or something. Mm-hmm. I think it was UFO, yeah. Was it UFO? Alien. And someone yeah. basically said that they had worked on an an uh, EBE uh, extraterrestrial entity and like had like all this detail. Whoever did it actually knew like uh, the language. Yes, and they had the all this de- biology. Yeah. yeah, they had all this biological information about these aliens and stuff, and it was a. <laughs> It was a very well done thing, but it was almost certainly also fiction. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's was. totally reminded me of like Dan Burrish, J. Rod stuff. So, does anybody that- remember Dan Burrish? No, <laughs> no. This was uh, so he was um, if any of you remember, and then like the late nineties, early or maybe it was the aughts. I'm confusing time now, but remember po- Project Camelot, Bill Ryan and Carrie Cassidy? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so he was a guy that I. Th- think ended up coming out of their thing but he had this it ended up that like you know he never worked at any of these bases but for a while he was like kind of the next bob lazar uh and he was had been working with these um uh ebes uh, that were, you know, grays, they were called J rods. He was using the J rod uh, terminology and uh there's this thing called the looking glass project which had to do with like, you know, uh, sort of future, this future scope, uh, called the looking glass. Anyway, it was a a whole thing. Um, Mm -hmm. you pro you probably have encountered like fringes of it. And I want to say that his his website was called like where Eagles dare or something like that. And maybe he's writing fiction now because it turns out that he was like a car dealer in Vegas and, you know, not working, uh, at S4. Um, but yeah, it really <laughs> like the, when I read that, uh, it reminded me a lot of the Dan Burrish stuff. That rocks. I mean, like for people to understand, like our exasperation at some of this, does anybody remember Corey good? What happened to Corey good? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Corey you know, good with the blue aliens. The blue aliens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The time travel, all that stuff, because like people were trotting that out. Like it was like some kind of big story. And of course it was nonsense. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And and that's the thing. I think, you know, if you are new to this stuff, you don't realize how many times this stuff has been trotted out again and again and again. Uh, and it's, it's the same stuff usually by the same people. Um, you know, hence bringing people back people like Bob Lazar. Um, and yeah. People, even people when like Rick Stody on like History Channel documentaries about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You no, know, everybody like knowing everything about him. Like I, I like imagine what it must be like to be Greg Bishop right now. <laughs> and, like, oh, like written that so long ago, and like written yeah. Project Beta so long, ago. and Doty's still out there like doing TV spots. I, I just before I, just before we started this show, I went, why didn't I invite Greg? <laughs> I would oh, love yeah, to know yeah. what, how Greg dealing with this. Yeah, yeah, we should we should yeah. we should do that in some future show. Just have Greg come on and talk about it because I mean, yeah, he's he's going to have some interesting takes on it. I mean, to me, the thing is, there is a legitimate phenomenon. There is something yeah. going on that we can't explain. I personally don't think it's extraterrestrial. I won't rule that out. 
but I think that's the least, you know, it, like lower in the options of what might be happening. Um, but I don't trust anything the government's going to say about this crap. Um, I don't trust these people who are trying to push for disclosure because, again, most of them are spooks. Most of them seem like they've been, just been running this whole scam. Whatever they're going for, they keep running it again and again. It never goes anywhere significant. So until it does, I, you know, to me, this is just more of the same. So until something legitimately different shows up, I'm more interested in people's personal experiences, uh, other ideas, and and uh, like ways of looking at this stuff that might help us understand it deeper. I'm not particularly interested in what the government's willing to admit, and in the end, that the government's willing to admit that no, we don't we, we don't have any ET craft, we don't have any of this stuff. You know the yeah. the most interesting thing I ever heard Bob Lazar say. Uh, you know, somebody asked him if he had seen you know an extraterrestrial at, at S four, and he said something to the effect of like he walked past a room and thought he saw one being like interrogated out of the corner of his eye, and I forget yeah. the. the yeah. But what he said after that was one of those things that always kind of made me curious about, like, how in on it Bob might be, was he goes, or at least that's what they wanted me to see. Right. Or I was supposed to see. And, uh, you know, I, I over the years, you know, and, and I, I'm not knocking George Knapp, uh, but I have wondered if Knapp is kind of floating in that same space where, uh, you know, some of the guys from MUFON were back in the day where, you know, he has a genuine interest in this, but he's also become an asset in some way. And he's sort of the um, handler of these other people and the way they disseminate uh, yeah. disinformation, I suppose, would be the way I would classify it. And that's yeah. the thing. Okay, so you have people testifying to this, testifying to that. It doesn't mean those that these people are lying. No, you that's know? what they think is you can say what you believe. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, yeah. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Lazar, I think Lazar experienced what he what he thought. I don't think Lazar is lying at all. I think, right. I think Lazar was taken for a ride. He yes. showed a bunch of yes. fake stuff and because they knew that he would go out and disseminate it. Right. right? Yes. He was a specter for those memes. Yes, um, exactly. And exactly. like, you know, it's and here's the thing. Like, he may even be cognizant. Of like what you're talking about, Saxon, about him being like, um, you know, I was probably just shown this. He may even know that in the back of his head. Yeah. But is that going to get him spots on History Channel shows? Right, exactly. No one wants to hear that crap. Everyone <laughs> wants to hear about the UFO and the alien that he saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and uh, AOC had made that comment, too, where she said, Pay attention to what people say under oath. Yeah. And that's important and I'll, as well. And I'll, I'll even qualify that um, because you can say what you believe under oath, but also keep in mind, um, just like with, with Grush talking about the skiff and things like that, the consequences for just putting testimony in front of a committee that is misleading, but nobody cares per se, there's not a whole lot of consequences for that. Mm. It's not the same as if somebody went and perjured themselves in a criminal trial. Um, you know, so even if they kind of got cornered in some way saying, well, you misrepresented this to the uh, subcommittee or, or, or whatever, you know, first you they're going to portray themselves as like this is a deep state trying to put us down. Yep. And, and two, there's probably not going to be anything that comes of it anyway. Right, right. And, and all of that gives the person more clout. You know, I, I was when we were talking in the slack about it, I was like, this reminds me so much of, you know, putting somebody over in wrestling. You know, yeah. like we're going to put this guy in front of the subcommittee. Um, this is what he believes. He's going to put this out there. We're all going to sit with him. And, uh, you know, now he's our new face for, yeah. uh, you know, yep. uh, our grift, basically. It, yeah, it, it, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. You know, and, he, and he doesn't. He may not even know that he's being manipulated. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, we don't know. We're not the. We're not in those people's heads, so we don't know what they know. But until someone shows, like I said, shows us something concrete, there's you know, it's the same old story with no evidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same or variations of right. Because if they if they don't know that they're being played, they don't know that they're being used. Well, then they can't admit that. Like they, you don't like you don't want to put them in a situation where they have to lie. Right. right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was always, you know, that's, yeah, Ren, you're, you're far more expert on this than I am, but you know, how I've always assumed that the CIA operates in other countries is they find true believers and just nudge them yeah. Uh, yeah. to get things done. That way they don't have to talk anybody into doing anything, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, 
one of my favorite things about how uh, the United States operates in the rest of the world was uh, uh, a crooked media uh, podcast about the scorpions and the wind of change. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it goes through other music artists that got manipulated by the CIA. Hmm. <laughs> that never knew that they were. And the information behind it got declassified, of course, after these people died. One of them was Nina Simone that went to yep. Africa. Uh, she was sponsored by what was uh, an African-American uh, Afrima- uh, organization, advocacy group, that turned out to be a CIA front. And you know, Nina Simone hated the United States government for how it manipulated and treated black people. She would have never done anything to help them. Right. So what they did is they set up the organization and she very happily went to, I think it was Nigeria and performed. Wow. You know, and it's like, these are how these things work. They don't have to be big conspiracies, but they can be these small, you know, the same way. Go ahead. I was just going to say, that's the same way that it was dealing in like in the, uh, the plastic arts world. You know, I mean, a lot of that has come out that this sort of this, you know, idea or meme that abstract expressionism is a CIA op. And there's truth in that. The truth being that like they approached, and I know this only because my mentor, Tony Conrad was like, kind of, he was, he was in the fifties. He was in New York, you know, uh, part of the art scene. And he was taught, he talked to me about how the CIA would do it is that it's essentially just like, yeah, they're just trying to find people that are, you know, are cool doing this. It's not like the movement itself. It's like, mm-hmm. all right, let me find somebody who's part of this movement and either fake it like they did with Nina Simone or like, you know, appeal to their fascist uh, leanings, which, you know, all artists are not, you know, incredibly liberal or peace loving. Um, you know, Barnett Newman was, you know, kind of a jerk. Uh, uh, yeah. So. Wait. Yeah, this is like completely makes sense. Yeah. I didn't know that about Nina Simone, actually. That Many makes perfect such sense, case. though. Yeah, look, people look at the history of like the Paris Review or the Iowa Writers Workshop in the literary yep. world. Yep, literary yeah. world, totally. <sighs> and then we could talk about Hollywood and, you know, that special <laughs> connection there. But it's it's all, you know, and it's not to say that all, each of these industries, I mean, most industries are corrupted because of capitalism, um, you know, and corruption. But, you know, it's not like the... It's not that cinema or movies are because of this or music is because of this. It's, you know, uh, you know, it's not the art itself. It's these essentially something being, you know, co-opted and uh, manipulated. Flipped. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, it, it, but it, like post World War Two, like, the, you know, intelligence, the CIA and everything, then they, they realize the power of like propaganda. And, um, you know, people say like psych warfare, psychological operation. But really what you're talking about is like manipulating uh, civilizations um, like manipulating their culture and like the because culture like sort of defines the boundaries of how you perceive the world around you right like influence the way people act uh just by filtering certain things into the media that they i mean that was the whole like a lot of people don't even know that about pbs like the original idea behind pbs um was similar to that it was like a rand corporation thing where they were trying to figure out a way to get propaganda into the inner cities um, yeah. And it's yeah. funny because a lot of this, too, is stuff that was really successful in the earlier part of the century with, you know, the Soviets uh, and with um, uh, and the, the Nazis is that kind of propaganda. Like, you know, think about the Soviets at the very beginning of, you know, uh, the century there and the kind of art that was coming out of there. You're talking about like uh, it was actually a big part of their push, you know, like Soviet architecture. Soviet mm-hmm. photography um, and mm-hmm. uh, film, you know, uh, there's this film by this filmmaker, Ziga Vertov, uh, called Man with a Movie Camera. And he has this entire manifesto talking about the Kino eye and the truth of cinema. And this was, you know, really supported by the Soviets there. And they knew, I mean, this was this was happening before America really got its, you know, understood how to use it uh this was being used across you know the atlantic uh and i think that you know post world war ii uh the u.s was like oh we we just got to do this you know mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. The, the thing i find interesting now and, and uh, I, i'm I apologize i'm taking us off track and trying to bring us back on track at the same time here is that with the way social media works you can do this sort of like cultural engineering that you're talking about uh, as a third party. Oh yeah. And yeah, you know, I mean, it, 
viral campaigns are an extension of you know the things we've been talking about and uh there, there's interesting articles out there about you know movie promotions and uh, you know bots on twitter and, and all of these things with their outsized reach and you find out that like you know this isn't russian disinformation this is you know an ad firm either trying to make somebody look good or bad or promote a product but it's done in such a uh seemingly organic way to us that you know we just see people on twitter or facebook or whatever having interesting discussions about it and then that gives us a you know a sense of clout that it's authentic and we might go buy it what what's this twitter you speak of <laughs> um It'll it's an archaic thing x gonna give it to you i'm not gonna <laughs> i refuse oh but, you know, i mean that- um it, the internet, I think, is, is like the perfect like delivery system for this stuff because you can not only can you you can reach like huge uh, huge audiences extremely easily by engineering something to go viral. You can also sit, like kind of like laser target niche communities as well. Yes, yeah. you know, and even even like build those communities like Crypto Cuttlefish, uh, who is a great Twitter threader who hasn't been around for many years now, but uh, some of his threads are, are legendary. And one of them, he talks about how common it was in the early days of 4chan for like naval intelligence guys and the Department of Energy people. Like, like, like it was spooked up even back then. Yeah. You know, and oh, like yeah. they realized really yeah. quickly, like, oh, we can like use like we can use this as a delivery system for this cultural engineering and then get yeah. really good at it because people online tend to react to things like um, out of like pure emotion. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People don't really like think rationally, even on like social media apps like Twitter. Right. Like your ability to even like respond to things in a nuanced manner is like limited by the character. Yeah. Like so it's like, you know, you're you're put into this. Like uh, you're put into this Skinner box where um, reacting to things in a more emotional manner usually gets you more attention and more dopamine from people liking and retweeting your reaction yep. to something. Yep. So it like rewards that kind of behavior. It, it creates this reinforcement loop. You know, you said something, Ren, that uh, like just kind of hit me in the face with this when you're talking about the character count on Twitter, because it having that artificial limit on your ability to articulate and interact or respond literally, you know, compresses your uh, rationality in a way. Um, and that's a even like linguistically, that that's a huge thing because. You know, with linguistics, basically, we use the words that are in our head to process our thoughts and our feelings and what have you. So if suddenly I only give you a small vocabulary or a limited amount of things to choose from, like you find that your ranges of intelligence and emotion are also limited because of that. Yeah. And it just shows you how intentional maybe it wasn't initially, but it certainly is now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that that's the big like, you know, lots of uh, absolute dullards like to talk about 1984. But that is a, a major salient point in 1984 is that like okay. language controls your ability to think and even like express yourself about certain topics. And maintaining control over that language is like incredibly important. And you can even, uh, you know, manipulate and change the language if you want to change the, the basically the boundaries of people's uh, perception. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. And there's, you know, we could go pretty far into like how much I think language and I'm sure. I- think you would agree ren you know in terms of ceremonial magic and Mm -hmm. magic in general and you know the idea of manipulating reality like language i think is is inherently tied up one doesn't exist without the other and i and i think i think we should probably do a show on that at some point i'd love yeah Yeah. Um, but right now i think we should close this one off uh any final words about disclosure guys finally (laughs) stay woke (laughs) i don't know thank god yeah, finally. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. <laughs> we need to make t-shirts about all the disclosures we survived. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. You have been listening to Where Did the Road Go? This show is made possible in part from our Patreons, and we thank you and everyone listening for helping us continue this exploration of the strange. You can always find everything Where Did the Road Go related at www.wheredidtheroadgo.com. And thank you so much for your support. <laughs>